and I'm a foot and ankle surgeon from Washington State. I've been in practice for over 30 years. I do a lot of uh, foot surgery. I've had thousands of patients that I've operated on. I put a lot of metal in, and over the years, I've had a keen sense of uh, awareness of some of the reactions that can happen with this metal, specifically systemic reactions. I've had a study going on over the past couple decades, over the past 10 years. I've, in, I've surgically removed over 1,000 implants and over 400 patients. Uh, some of the systemic effects that I've seen over the years, muscle spasms, fibromyalgia, joint pain throughout the body, severe fatigue, sleeping problems, migraines, dermatological conditions, emotional issues, exacerbation of rheumatologic conditions, paralysis issues, which one was a little present, neuromuscular conditions throughout the body, uh, reactions of hardware in other parts of the body. Cause and effect is what I'm presenting and where I place metal implants or somebody else has and certain symptoms develop. Metal implants are then removed and certain symptoms either significantly improve or completely resolve. And in many cases, it's completely resolved. Cause, cause and effect is very powerful and it's hard to dispute. In my study, it appears we have sensitivity reactions as well as galvanic reactions and allergic reactions or a combination thereof. One thing I've been working on is galvanic or battery type reactions between dissimilar metals in the body. Titanium is positively charged, stainless steel negatively charged, amalgams are negatively charged, and I've had success in removing metal from the feet, improving symptoms in a total knee or hip or back issues. So how much of the body is comprised of electrical impulses? Well, a, a depolarization of the nerve and a nerve impulse fires off at about 70 millivolts. I worked with a, a neurologist, and he does a lot of electrodiagnostic testing, and he recommended we use a voltmeter and ultrasound gel. This is baseline for this testing here, 3.2 millivolts. I then took titanium plate and a stainless steel plate I've taken out of the body, 478 millivolts. Uh, and these are not touching each other. And then I've been having problems with metal in the foot and metal in the mouth. And so I ran this good old Hot Wheels track six foot away and still 118 millivolts. Here's some corrosion from a plate, titanium plate, that was only in there for four and a half months. Next patient is a, uh, it was a, an engineer. He had severe neuropathy, had sores at the tips of his toes, infections, and preulcerative lesions underneath his second and third metatarsals. We had to, had to shorten the metatarsal, straighten the toes. He did fine with that. Came back five and a half years later. Big toe is curling, preulcerative lesion. Had to fuse that, but I noticed swelling over where we had the hardware. We moved the hardware, and... He ended up uh, coming back a couple weeks later for his second post-op visit. He says, okay, doc, uh, being the ALN engineer that I am, I looked at what happened with my body here. He said, uh, six years ago, I had an ACL repair with titanium screw. Four years ago, prior to the surgery, he just started developing neuropathy symptoms in his feet, progressed to his hands, his entire body. He put the hardware in my feet. Three months later, I started developing uh, basically paralysis for 45 minutes every two to three days and up went up to 10 hours a day. He was disabled. He took the screws out of my feet and I went from being paralyzed 10 hours a day to um, one hour a day. Uh, then he ended up, uh, we got him tested with a Melisa test and he was uh, positive for nickel and significantly positive for palladium, which he had in six uh, white gold crowns in his mouth, 26% palladium. So, here were the screws from his feet and the one from his knee. And so we ended up, I ended up presenting his case over in London at a lecture on metal allergies uh, or metal sensitivities and reactions associated with systemic effects. And this was a letter, open letter to Dr. Stetskull, Vera Stetskull, who developed the Melisa test. So even though we never met Dr. Stetskull's impact on my life is immeasurable. Our lives crossed paths after I had been a rigid quadriplegic for over five and a half years. I experienced episodes of paralysis that would leave me completely immobilized, paralyzed for excess of 10 hours a day. Neurologists and geneticists performed neurological and, and genetic testing at the University of Washington and Mayo Clinic over this time without additional diagnosis other than episodic rigid quadriplegia. It wasn't until my podiatrist, Scott, Dr. Scott Schroeder, suggested the Melisa test that I saw any hope. When Dr. Stateskull offered to do the Melisa test, her on a gratis basis was more than I could have ever hoped for. The testing and results allowed me and my doctors to understand what was truly happening in my body. Then we were able to formulate a treatment plan. Today, as I write this, I am completely paralysis-free and words cannot express my gratitude for what a difference Dr. 
the state skull has made in my life. I was told that most likely I'd be in a wheelchair the rest of my life, and just last year I had the opportunity to walk my daughter down the aisle at her wedding. So, uh, he had oxidation under these implants. I think he had a galvanic reaction between the two that then exacerbated the sensitivity reaction of the two. So, in closing, these diagnostic uh, reactions or, or diagnosing these uh, reactions, you have to have a high index of clinical suspicion. And really, we need to train our medical community. A lot of the surgeons and docs in our area have no idea about this, and I would implore the F FDA to really work with this in medical school training residencies and CME courses. As far as testing goes, one of my rheumatologists comes colleague says, I, I don't have great tests all the time, but I have to use those in combination with my clinical information. And so uh, the MELISA test has been significantly important for me, and I really think this needs to be covered by insurance uh, throughout this country to really get this thing going. And we need more implants and better implants for uh, good functioning non-metallic implants as possible. And last slide, and obviously there's more research needed. And uh, but we really have people that are out there suffering now, and so we really need to get this information out to the docs. Thank you very much. Thank you.